Hey there, fellow van builders. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jason, the van teacher. In today's lesson, we're covering how to properly size wire and other wire related topics. Be sure to stick around for some tips and tricks at the end of this video to help make wiring easier and more fun. Let's get right to it. First, let's talk about why wire size matters. Your electrical system is basically made up of a power source, loads on that source, and the conductors that carry the electricity from the batteries to the loads. The wires that you use as conductors need to be able to carry the amps without heating up too much and be able to do so without losing too much voltage along the way. If you use a wire too small for the job, it will present too much resistance to the voltage trying to push the amps through, causing the wire to get hot and not enough voltage reaching your devices. While you can always oversize your wires, you'll soon reach a point where large wires simply become too expensive and too hard to work with. Properly sizing each wire maintains the safety of your system while keeping wiring cost low. Voltage drop is an important consideration because some devices like to have a high voltage to work properly. To explain voltage drop as simply as I can, let's look at the following example. Here you have a power source that measures 12.6 volts. Those volts will push amps through a wire to reach your loads, but along the way, resistance in the wire will reduce the voltage by the time it reaches your device. If you have 12.3 volts present at your loads, your voltage dropped by 2.4%. As long as you can keep your voltage dropped to less than 3%, you should be fine. For the most part, the length of the wire runs in your van will be fairly short, and the wire gauge will be sufficient to keep the drop within this range. The best thing you can do is to properly size your wires and keep the round trip wire runs as short as possible. Related to this consideration is how you wire your solar panels and DC to DC charge controllers. For example, when wiring solar panels, connecting them in series will add voltage resulting in a higher voltage entering the charge controller. Even when factoring in the long cable runs from your roof, you will still have plenty of volts to start charging up your batteries, even when your panels are operating in less than ideal conditions. A DC to DC charge controller will also be getting its voltage from a source that may be some distance away. In my Ram ProMaster, the source of voltage for the DC to DC charger is the starter battery, which is in the seat cabin area and the wires running to the charge controller are nearly 20 feet in length round trip. To minimize voltage drop, I use a six gauge wire, which keeps it under 3%. If the run was much longer, I would consider using four gauge wire, but it would need to be an extremely long run of nearly 100 feet. Before we get to wire gauge, let's take a look at the different types of wire you should be using in your van. Your van is a bit different from your home in that it is subject to vibration, temperature swings, high humidity, tight wire bends and turns, and sharp edges. Using the same wire that is used for residential applications is not a good practice and can be dangerous. This means that you need to use well insulated, protected, stranded wire. A great choice is marine grade wire. Marine grade rated wire is stranded, contains more copper for a given gauge, has high temperature insulation made of protective PVC, and can be tinned for extra corrosion protection. At a minimum, use SAE, or automotive wire, and avoid using solid copper residential wiring. Here are some other things you should think about when running wire in your van. Try to avoid bundling too many wires tightly together. While you do want to keep your wires neat and organized, bundling wires prevents heat from dissipating and may cause your wires to heat up. Also take extra measures to protect wires from sharp edges. Anytime a wire passes over sharp metal, you risk having the wire's protective coating becoming damaged and a short to ground may occur. 
Use wire conduit or other protection wherever this may occur. Also, avoid placing wire in locations where you might drive a screw into it. In my installation, I needed to be extra careful along the roof ribs since I used them for wire runs as well as attachment mounts for the ceiling panels. A final wiring tip is to label every wire at both ends. I usually write the device name and amperage of the circuit on a piece of tape and stick it to both ends. Once your walls go up, you'll have a hard time remembering the purpose of every wire. Now for the part of the video you've been waiting for. Choosing the proper wire size is actually pretty simple. The easiest way to do this is to use a wire size calculator or a wire chart. Start with a diagram of all of your wire runs. If you are early in the planning stages of your van build, now is the time to minimize the lengths of your runs by placing loads close to the battery bank. Find the shortest route to run the wire and write down those lengths. Add up the total wattage on the circuit and convert to amps. Use the equation amps equals watts divided by volts to determine amps on a circuit. Once you have the length of the wire and the current flowing through the circuit, reference a chart like this or similar wire charts to determine wire gauge. You can always increase the size of your wire until cost, weight, and ease of installation becomes an issue. However, having a slightly larger wire size than necessary allows for future upgrades to the circuit without having to run larger wire. Be sure to read the installation guide for the devices as wire gauge is often specified by the manufacturer. Most of the wire you will use in your van will range from 4 aught wire used to connect batteries to 4 to 8 gauge wire used to connect solar panels, DC chargers, and main circuit connections to 12 to 14 gauge wire used to connect most of your DC circuits. Notice that there is a big difference in 4 gauge wire and 4 aught wire. Once wire size reaches 1 gauge, it goes to 0, then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. 4 aught wire is the same as 0, 0, 0, 0, and is nearly a quarter inch thicker than 4 gauge wire. If you are still watching this video, here are a few bonus pro tips to help you with wiring your van. Tip number one, get a nice set of wire strippers and wire crimpers. I like using self-adjusting automatic wire strippers that help you measure, cut, and strip the right amount of insulation off the wire in one easy motion. As for crimpers, a quality wire crimper will create a solid and secure connection to your wire terminal. If you need to crimp large lugs, use a crimper that has the power to secure the connection or use a hammer type crimper such as this one. Tip number two, fuses protect your wires in the event of a short circuit. Make sure the fuse you select is rated less than your wire opacity so that the fuse blows before the wire heats up. I will be releasing a video next week on how to properly size fuses. Tip number three, wire lever nuts are a great alternative to traditional wire nuts and make wiring parallel DC circuits easy. You can get three port, four port, or five ports to connect multiple wires to the circuit. Make sure to wrap the lever nut with electrical tape to prevent the levers from accidentally opening and releasing the wire. Tip number four, don't wire lights or similar voltage sensitive loads in series. Voltage drop will cause each light to be dimmer than the one before. Instead, use parallel wiring. Tip number five, my favorite place to shop when buying wire is the local boating supply store. Not only do they enjoy helping me with all of my odd questions, they also sell specialty wire by the foot. Trust me, your local home supply store will not have everything you need, but if you have a marine shop in town, you'll be pleased with what they have to offer. And now for my top tip. 
Run a couple of extra circuits to locations where you can easily add future upgrades. Maybe to the kitchen cabinets, under a bench seat, or to the cabin area up front. I ran an extra 10 amp circuit with 12 gauge wire to the pantry. It turns out that after a year, I decided to convert the dinette seating area to a love seat and needed to add two more USB charge ports. The extra circuit allowed me to do this without having to run new wire behind the walls. I also ran positive and negative wires inside the walls and ceilings from the pantry on the driver's side of the van to the kitchen cabinets on the passenger side. That way, if I ever need to send power to the other side of the van, I can do so without having to find a way across the floor or ceiling. Simply terminate those wires with lever nuts and leave the fuse out of the fuse holder. And don't forget to label those wires to help you remember what they are for. If you would like to learn more about van electrical systems, check out my camper van electrical overview video or for more detailed tutorials, check out my videos on installing shore power, DC to DC chargers, solar power, and a complete guide to DC circuit wiring. If you would like to know how much my electrical system cost, or any other budget related items, check out my video on how much our 2023 Ram ProMaster cost to build. Also, be sure to check out the links in the description below for more information on any of the items mentioned in this video. And if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below.